All right, so you are doing assignment number 11. There is belt work on the board. You are answering the five highlighted questions. You do not have to write the question. Try and answer it in complete sentences. So when you go to study this, you know what the question was. But you do not have to write the question. But take a few minutes to answer these five highlighted questions. And then number 11, we are doing two gizmos. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking bits and pieces of those and we're going to be doing them together. So these are your unit three gizmos. But first of all, before we start, answer these five questions and then underneath that we'll start the gizmos. All right. Gizmo is like a simulated lab activity thing. <laughs> You are doing number 11 in your notebook. You are answering the five highlighted questions, so everyone should be writing. Answering the five highlighted questions, and then we will start the gizmos underneath after you answer those five questions. So, this is number 11. Tomorrow we will be doing number 12. So, tomorrow we will be doing your Kahoot test review, and then your test is on Friday. So, one, please make sure you are studying for your test. Start now if you have not started already. And two, make sure that your notebook is in order by Friday. We're turning in your notebook for a grade on Friday. So it needs to be complete, organized, in order, ready to be graded by Friday.
questions. So number one, what does a plant need to survive and grow? Russell? Sunlight. Just sunlight? That's all they need? Water. And water and carbon dioxide. carbon dioxide. So they need all three of those things. Those are the three reactants for your process of photosynthesis. So water, carbon dioxide, sunlight. Right. What does an animal need to survive and grow? So what do animals need to survive and grow? Oxygen? Glucose? Anything else? Are those, are those the only two things of your cellular respiration? Only two reactants for your cellular respiration? Yes, so that is the main two things that we're going to focus on. So they need glucose and they need oxygen. Number three, how do animals and plants depend on each other? Yes, ma'am. Um, so I said that animals depend on plants because animals are dependent on the plants. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking about like seriously, how like animals like help spread like plants like they eat it and like they like I guess like food like they eat it properly. Yes. Yes. Very good. So yes, your plants they make food and they produce oxygen we then breathe in that oxygen and we eat plants and then we produce what that the plants use carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and then we give them what do water. we give them water yes so it is a cycle we depend on them and they depend on us they also depend on us as ng said for spreading their seeds yes Birds will take seeds from one place and move them to another. Deer will do the same. Your heterotrophs will help further their um, reproduction other ways. Anyway, okay, let's go back to this. Um, to survive, what gas do we need to breathe in? So what do we breathe in? We breathe in oxygen. Where is that oxygen produced? From photosynthesis in plants. Very good. Very good. All right, so we have this scenario happening. We have a plant underneath a light source in an enclosed area and then we have access to different temperatures so we can change the temperature, we can change the light intensity, and we can change the CO2 level. So I want you to, underneath your bell work, I want you to make two predictions. First of all, I want all your cell phones to be put away because we are in class. So put the cell phones away. All cell phones can be put away. Thank you. I want you to make two predictions. One, I want you to predict what is going to happen if we take your, your three reactants and we take them all the way to the max. So what's gonna happen if we bring our temperature all the way up? What's gonna happen if we do our light intensity and our CO2 all the way to the max? All right. And then your second prediction, I want you to predict what will happen if we take away all three of these things. So what's going to happen if you take away temperature or if you drop down your temperature, you take away your light intensity and you take away your CO2. So what is gonna happen at both extremes? Okay, so take a few minutes to write down your predictions. So you're predicting what is happening if you take your three indicators all the way up 
And then you are predicting what's gonna happen if you take them away. So two predictions you should be writing down right now. So what's gonna happen if you put those three things to the max? And then what's gonna happen if you take those three things away? Let's assume yes. Okay. And then, once you write your two predictions, I want you to, on your notebook, tell me what these bubbles represent. So you see these bubbles rising from the plant? What do those bubbles represent? So predict what will happen if we put these three levels all the way up. What will happen if we put all these levels down? And then tell me what those bubbles represent. So who wants to tell me what their first prediction was? What did you predict? If we take all three of these levels and we put them all the way up to the max, what will happen, Renee? Probably get overwhelmed and die. Probably get overwhelmed and die, okay. Who thinks they know what will happen if we take away those three things? So what's gonna happen if we take away those three things, MG? Okay, so we also think that it's going to die and welt. Or, or wilt, sorry, not wilt, wilt. And then, what are these bubbles representing? Oxygen. oxygen. So if the bubbles go away, that means we do not have any oxygen, which means do we have photosynthesis or no? No. If we are not producing oxygen, do we have photosynthesis? No. no, we do not have photosynthesis. If we do not have oxygen, because oxygen is one of our products, if we are not producing oxygen, we are not undergoing photosynthesis. All right, so let's look and see what happens in our two scenarios. So our first scenario, we're going to crank up every one of our indicators. So what is happening to our plant? What's happening to our oxygen production? It's not there. So our plant is not doing well. So on your notebook, write down your results. So we. In science, we write down our hypothesis, and then we write down our results to see if our hypothesis was correct. So yes, our, our, our hypothesis was correct, and that if you crank up your light intensity, your carbon dioxide level, and your temperature, it will overwhelm the plant, it will be too much, and it cannot produce photosynthesis because there's no oxygen production happening. So we know that there's no photosynthesis. It will probably die. It most likely is dead, yes. All right, so that's if we take those numbers to the high extreme. So let's see what happens if we take those numbers to the low extreme. So let's bring down our temperature, bring down our light intensity, and our CO2 levels. What is happening to our plant in this scenario? What was it? Same thing. So yes, your plant is not going to produce oxygen. So you are not going to undergo photosynthesis if you do not have some amount of temperature, some amount of light intensity, and some amount of CO2. So everyone should be writing what is actually happening after this scenario. So you need to have two hypotheses and then two results. So everyone should be writing.
And then, so if we bring this up a little bit, we get some amount of photosynthesis occurring. What were those bubbles representing? Those bubbles are oxygen, yes. you get your results written down you are then going to answer these three questions so how does temperature affect oxygen production how does your carbon dioxide level affect your oxygen production and then how does oxygen production relate to the rate of photosynthesis so take a few minutes to answer those questions Again, you do not need to write the question. Try and write your answer in a complete sentence so that you know what the question was asking you when you go home and study these questions and study these notes for your test on Friday. How did our temperature affect our oxygen production? How did our CO2 level affect our oxygen production? And then, how does oxygen production relate to the rate of photosynthesis? So who wants to tell me, how does temperature affect oxygen production? How does temperature affect oxygen production? What do you think? Yes, sir. Uh, very good. So yes, you're too extreme. So if you have too hot a temperature, your plant will be too warm and it won't survive. If you have a too cold a temperature, your plant will also not survive. So your extremes are not good for plants. What about our CO2 level? How does our CO2 level affect our oxygen production? Yes, ma'am. Correct, so that's the one extreme. So if you do not have any, what if you have on the other extreme? What if you have too much? What's gonna happen? What happened to our plant? Well, 
when we cranked it all the way up. It won't produce any at all either. So again, your extremes, so either too much CO2 or not enough CO2, it will not produce any oxygen. So you need a kind of a happy middle, happy medium of your temperature and your CO2 in order for production of oxygen. Very good. So how does your oxygen production relate to the rate of photosynthesis? Yes, Renee. Yes, but flip it the other way. So if you do not have photosynthesis occurring, will you have any oxygen being produced? No, very good. So if your rate of photosynthesis is low, then you will not have a lot of oxygen being produced. If your rate of photosynthesis is high, then you will have a lot of oxygen being produced. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to try and find a happy place for our little plant in order for it to grow and make oxygen. So I want you to draw this table on your paper. So draw this table on your paper. should be drawing this table on their paper. So we're going to go back to our little plant. We're going to see at what temperature, how much light intensity, what CO2 level, with how much of those is going to make the most efficient or the most oxygen for the oxygen production. So we need to have this table and then we need to go back and figure out what our numbers for that table will be. So everyone should be drawing the table in their notebooks. So draw the table. This table needs to be in your notebook. Okay, so everyone has this table in their notebook. All right, so we have our little plant here. We have a little bit of temperature, a little bit of light intensity, and a little bit of CO2 making a little bit of oxygen. We want this number to be the highest we can get it. So you tell me, what should I do in order to get this number as high as I can get it. What should I do? What should I do to these three things? More of it? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. A little bit of what? Everything. Everything? Okay. You think we can get a bigger number? So if our two extremes do not work, where should our where should our numbers be if the two extremes don't work? In the middle. So let's see what in the middle looks like. So it's 25 degrees Celsius. That is 50%. And that is 500. 500. So we have 42.2. So now let's change one at a time and see if we can get a number that's higher than 42.2. Because while, yes, we are in the middle, that may not be the happy place for our plant. So let's see what we need to do. So let's try increasing our temperature. What happens? Oops. Oh, okay, so we're gonna leave that to where it gets to 42.2. Right there. All right, what about our light intensity? What if we increase our light intensity? Ooh. Looks like 49.6 is our biggest number there. And then what about our CO2 level? What if we... That's not really changing anything. 
if you bring it down. So, so not right in the middle because we can use a little bit more light intensity, but our carbon dioxide and our temperature were about in the middle, but we can have a little bit more light intensity. So in your table, you need to write down these numbers. So your temperature was 26 degrees Celsius. Make sure you write down your units. Your light intensity was 67%. Your CO2 is 550 parts per million. And then your oxygen production was 49.6 milliliters per hour. So those numbers need to be in your table. So again, our two extremes do not work for our plant. They do not like high temperatures or low temperatures. They don't like high amounts of carbon dioxide or low amounts of carbon dioxide. And they don't like high amounts of light or low amounts of light. They want something kind of in the middle. All right. So everyone has that table filled out? Okay. Now what I want you to do is look at question 4A. So question 4A. Why would it be hard to find the ideal light intensity if the temperature were very hot or very cold? So answer that question for me in your notebook. Why would it be difficult to find the ideal light intensity if temperature was either hot too hot or too cold. So in both scenarios, why would it be difficult to find the perfect light intensity? So take a few minutes to answer that question. So think about your two environments, your very hot environment and your very cold environment. Why would it be hard to get the perfect amount of light intensity for your plants in each of those environments? Don't worry about answering B. Don't worry about the CO2 levels. Just think about your light intensity for each of your environments. Tell me what they answered. Why would it be hard to find the perfect light intensity for either your hot or cold environments? Who has the answer? Yes, sir. Very cold light intensity is very likely for a lack of sun, while it's a very hot light intensity is too high. Perfect. So, just like we saw in the gizmo. If you have too much or not enough of your temperature, then your light intensity is going to be hard to find. So think of your two climates. So down here in Florida, what's most of the time happening with our uh, climate? It's hot. It's hot and it's very sunny, right? So if we have a hot climate, you're usually going to have a lot of light intensity, which we saw was not good for plants. So think about up north where they have actual seasons and they have this thing called winter that actually lasts for more than a week. What's gonna to happen to your light intensity up there? What do you think? You won't have that much. 
So you have to find a happy medium for your plants or your plants have to learn how to adapt and survive those two extreme environments. All right, very good. So now we're going to switch from photosynthesis and now we're going to talk about the energy cycle as a whole. All right, so real quick, what is this organelle? It is a chloroplast because it is what color? Green, what inside the chloroplast is making it green? Chlorophyll. What is this group called? Grana. What is your granite made of? What are the individual discs? Thylakoids. What is the thing surrounding? Outer membrane. And then what is the empty space, the fluid in the empty space inside? The stroma, because we're in the chloroplast. The matrix is in the mitochondria. Yes. All right. So we have our chloroplast here. So what process is happening in our chloroplast? Photosynthesis. So look at these. What do I need to put into my chloroplast for photosynthesis? CO2, oxygen? No. No? CO2 and? Water. 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 And if I add light, what's going to happen? What am I going to make? Oxygen and glucose. So, on your paper, write down the balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. Try and do it from memory. So write down your balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis on your paper. So try to do it from memory because you will need to know it for your test on Friday. Someone give me my balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. Yes, Alex, uh, Lexi. Sunlight plus 6 h 2 plus 6 CO2 plus 6 h 2 plus 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 Synthesis are sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Your products are sugar, which is specifically glucose. That's not sugar. That's sugar. That's glucose. Sorry. Yes, the two was incorrect. I changed it. Okay, so glucose and then oxygen. We want our balanced chemical equation. So we want the same number of stuff on this side as we have on this side. So we need to have a six in front of the water, in front of the carbon dioxide, and in front of the oxygen. Why is there not a number here? How much are we producing? One. One, yes. And then we do not need another number in front of sunlight. Yes, ma'am. Do you need to have to memorize Yes, you need to memorize this. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, so let's see if we are correct. Let's see if we have our balanced chemical equation correct. So we do, so it's 
6 H2O plus 6 CO2 plus sunlight yields 6 O2 plus C6 H12O6. There we go. All right. What is this thing? Mitochondria. What is, what are these folds called? The cristae. So the folds are the cristae. What is the cristae made out of? What is being folded? The inner membrane. What is this on the outside? The outer membrane. What is the fluid inside? The matrix. Very good. So make sure you know your structures of both your chloroplasts and your mitochondria. So what process is happening inside this organelle? Cellular respiration. Yes. In general, for the most part, it is cellular respiration. So what two things do I need from here? I need oxygen and glucose. Once I have those two things, what is this process? Glycolysis. You have to break down your sugar molecule. Because remember, your sugar molecule is a six ring carbon. Is it big? Is it small enough to go through the membrane? No. No, you have to break it down on the outside of the mitochondria. So that is happening in your cytoplasm of your cell. You need to break it down into two pyruvates. That creates a little bit of energy. And then your pyruvates can make their way into the mitochondria where they react with the oxygen to make what? What am I making? Am I making sugars? No, no. no. what am I making? Oxygen. I am making carbon dioxide and water. You guys need to know this. <coughs> I am using oxygen to make carbon dioxide. So I'm not making oxygen, I'm making carbon dioxide. So now, underneath your photosynthesis reaction, write your balanced chemical equation for cellular respiration. You need to know the reactants and the products for both of those processes. You need to know these equations. So write down your balanced chemical equation for cellular respiration underneath your balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. Yes, you need to know that there are sixes in front because that is your balanced chemical equation. That makes the same amount of stuff on this side as it does this side. So what is my balanced chemical equation for cellular respiration? 6O2 plus C6H12O6 Do we draw equal signs? Arrow or yield, what am I making? 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O and ATP. How much ATP am I producing at the end of cellular respiration? Yes, 36. Very good. Because 2 from your first stage, 2 from your second stage, and then 32 from your third stage. Yes. So you need to know these two reactions. Right. So let's look and see if we are correct. We're going to show our chemical equation and then we're going to balance it. So are we correct? Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Then we have this cycle thing. So you have photosynthesis here and you have respiration here. And you have this arrow going like this. So this means that you have something coming into photosynthesis and then something coming out of photosynthesis. Whatever is coming out of photosynthesis is going into respiration, and then whatever is coming out of respiration is going to go into photosynthesis. So it is a cycle. So you tell me 
Where would my oxygen go? On the top or the bottom? Top. On the top? Very good. What about my glucose? Where would that go? On the bottom? No, it goes on the top because my photosynthesis is making glucose. Where does my carbon dioxide go? On the bottom. And my water? On the bottom. And then we balance it. Very good. So write this in your notebook. Write this whole cycle, circle thing. Make sure you know it. Make sure you know that the products of photosynthesis are the reactants of respiration. And the reactants of respiration are the products of photo... Sorry. Hold on. The reactants of photosynthesis are the products of respiration. And the reactants of re respiration are the products of... Yes, I think I'm saying that right. Anyway, one is used for the other. They're in a cycle, in a circle. The products of one thing are the reactants of the other thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So... down here that I want us to try and answer before we go. All right, so what is this organelle? Chloroplast. Chloroplast. Oh. Hello? Okay, thank you. Kylie, you're signing out. All right, um, so what is this organelle? Chloroplast. What process is happening inside the chloroplast? Photosynthesis. So which one of these describes photosynthesis? Which one describes photosynthesis? C. C? Yeah. We all think C? Yeah. All right, let's we'll find out at the end. Which of the following is not a necessary input for photo, the process of photosynthesis? D. D? Yeah. We all agree it's D? Yeah. Right? Where within the cell does photosynthesis take place? Chloroplast. Where does photosynthesis B. take place? B. We all think it's B? Okay. Which item listed is not produced in the process of cellular respiration? What is not produced? B. B or C? B. No, C. 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 Bro, bro, look at what you just wrote down. C. What is not produced during the process of cellular respiration? Right. On the what is not produced during the process of cellular respiration? Where within the cell does the process of respiration take place? Inside, outside, both inside or outside, or in the chloroplast? I think it's C. It's not And No, it's not D. What should I put? C. 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 So this is your process of photosynthesis, is C. What is not produced is oxygen, because what produces oxygen? Photosynthesis, plants. Cellular respiration does not produce oxygen. Cellular respiration uses oxygen. Where does photosynthesis take place? The chloroplast. What is not produced in cellular... Oh, this is not necessary for photosynthesis. So, oxygen is not necessary for photosynthesis. And then what is not produced in cellular respiration? Glucose is not produced in cellular respiration. Where is glucose produced? Photosynthesis. 
Where is respira respiration taking place? Both. Both, because your glycolysis is the breaking down of sugar. Where is that taking place? Outside the mitochondria in the cytoplasm, not the chloroplast. Please tell me that you're joking, Russell. Russell, you need to study. All right, so we'll do a quick review tomorrow. Your test is on Friday.